big prog progno prognostication. I'm trying to say appurtenances, but I'm, uh, you get the idea of where, how much, how much flex do we have in that? What sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's election season. We're taking a poll. You've got plus or minus four percent. Are we talking about what are we talking about there? Can you give us an idea? That's a multiple hundred thousand dollar question at this point. Uh, it's I, it's I very understand. hard. To, I understand like, that, but I have to ask it. <laughs> right. Here are the uncertain factors. August and September, or excuse me, July and August are the peak months each year for sales tax revenue to the city. While sales taxes are number three revenue generator at the city, it is obviously still a big impact when you're talking about our operations and funding our operations as far as fluctuations to that revenue source. So we were looking at June. June was very sluggish. There was actually some decreases of activity from May to June. What we wanna see is how did it come in in August, July and August? We were projecting it to be about 50% down. So that was built in the numbers about 50% down. We're hoping that's conservative. But again, we're talking about there were no events at all in the summer. There was no activity in town. Restaurants were only open at most to 25% capacity, but several were still closed and several are still closed. So that's where there's kind of a guessing game. And also the biggest question also as well is, um, Internet sales. Internet sales were very, very strong in May. They broke records in the city in May. Then they dropped a little bit in June. So that's what we're looking at is they were kind of all over the place. Right now, the numbers make no rhyme or reason because where some people might have lost their jobs, others did not. Where some activity went, went down, we saw the construction sector, for example, do very well, but that's more of the runtime side. But also, you know, we've seen REIT has gone up, for example. So really all these other aspects are, you know, putting our budget a little bit in flux right now. But if you're looking at purely sales tax, you know, you have kind of two sets of sales tax consumers in the city. You have the residents that are shopping online, shopping at Safeway, um, buying goods and services then at places like Carmichael's, but then you have your tourists. And we know that tourism dropped this year. So you have a lot of day tourists to the city that or overnight guests at the Salish Lodge. So we know there's an impact there. Um, we know there's some anecdotal information that our lodging was down 75% the first few months. Did it rebound a little bit in the summer? Again, we were projecting that about 50% in the summer. So we really need to, to see where we land. Those are the two critical months to see where we land. And I think some of the information is, you know, when is the, but when, if you're looking at 21 instead of 20, the question is, when is the rebound going to happen in 21? If, for example, you have a business and your numbers are lower in 2020 than you expected at the end of the year, you may close your business or you may lay off people or you may um, slow down your planning for next year. So there is definitely an impact to what happens this year to next year. So that's why it's kind of critical to get two months of information from our largest months or traditionally largest months of sales tax to kind of see where at least the, the compass is headed at this point. And Rick, do you have a question? I just had a comment, Robert, but I'll wait till uh, council member let's say and, your, and yourself are done with the, with the dialogue. Okay. Yeah, I, I, have a, I guess I, had, I have another comment, but I'll wait until if somebody else has a, has a question. Or, I guess it's not a, not a comment, it's a question, but I'll wait my turn. Unless nobody wants to have, ask something, I'll be happy to keep going. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll um, so the other question I had was fiscal year 2020. Uh, we appropriate, had appropriated budget of the 19.17 million for operating uh, uh, budget, and then the 4.095 for the uh, administrative departments. How are we doing on those budgets? Are we coming in under? Are we going to be over? And then what happens to assuming that you know if we're under if we're over obviously we know what happens we need to appropriate additional funds to cover that but if we're under where does that where does that money go and how much of that do we have available to us to use uh then in 2021 and 2022 okay very good question uh we were actually going to come to council 
probably in another month with our 2020 forecast. Uh, once we get past um, the third quarter here, so after September 30th, September 30th, so probably mid next month and next month. But uh, we also have a revenue drop for the current year. So we're actually coming in very well. And um, every department right now is expected to come in under budget. So, you know, knock on wood, we don't have any issues where we have to come back to council at this point. So we're, everybody's living within their means. Uh, Rick had an internal target of 500,000. We're trying, we're making sure that we hit that for council this year. But that being said, revenues have dropped. So again, going back to that critical piece of time between August and September, getting those numbers, that's going to definitely show us for 2020 what our gap's going to be this year, where we're going to land. All right. So ultimately, what I'm getting at, and and I'll I'll stop talking here in a second, is that if we know what that gap is for 2020 and we anticipate a 426,000 currently anticipate for 2021 yet we'll update it as we go that's that's not just that we're looking to tap into our quote unquote rainy day fund uh, for 426,000 it could be much greater based upon where 2020 finishes yes that is correct Thank you. If I could clarify, Councilman, let's say it sounded like part of your question too was, is the administration's thinking that any ending fund balance in 20, be, would it be applied to returning some of the items desired in 21 or would it, or would it reduce the reliance on reserves or the rainy day fund? And I, more, more geared around reducing the reliance on the, on the reserve. Yeah, I think that, that's, that's the answer. I think if that was the question. Um, is that we would hope to reduce the reliance on that rainy day fund as much as possible it, in anticipation that it could be worse. It, and if not, we want it could be much worse in 22. Councilmember Mayhew. Yeah, so I was just going to comment um, because that that uh, that last uh, what the mayor's comment uh, was where I was folks as well is historically up. So, so always the <clears throat> appropriation and the actual for every single year, they're always different. Um, almost always the actual is a little bit lower. Sometimes it's higher. They have to come back and ask us for a different additional appropriation if that was to happen. But um, if you look back over the years, which I've done, um, the um, actuals uh, have tended in Snoqualmie to come in under the budget, which speaks to generally good of financial management. And what the, what happens is that money then ends in the general fund balance. And what then happens to it after that is up to the council. So um, nothing could be done with that fund balance as you exit a year unless we uh, approve it. What the council, what this council has done, um, you know, I've only been on it a few years, but for many, many years, this council has primarily put the, the excess amounts into the rainy day fund. That is where the rainy day fund came from. So um, the, the mayor's comments were, and, and I think what uh, Council Member say was driving at is completely consistent with what's happened in the past and I guess what I would expect. And so um, uh, I just, I guess I, I want to make sure that that answer to Council Member Lassay's point was, you know, what happens to the fund balance? The answer is, well, it's in general fund, fund balance, unless we put it somewhere else. And we have typically in past iterations of ourselves put it to the rainy day fund. Yes, thank you. Uh, Rick, did you have a question? A comment? Uh, no, just a comment. Um, I, I agree with, with everything that's been said. Um, I just wanted to throw it out now uh, that this budget obviously is unprecedented from what we've seen in, in the number of years, even in, the, in other agencies where I have been before, uh, rather than from coming to Snoqualmie. So being that it's such a dynamic type of budget where it's almost a living document that's going to change month to month, pending pandemic, election, protests, whatever you want to put into that category, um, I wanted to bring up that the CDC has said, uh, wrote an article that said that um, prepare to hunker down for the winter. Uh, obviously what they're saying is this, this spike can go up as far as um, COVID cases. 
obviously going into the winter time uh, for tourism, um, it drops a little bit, obviously because of the wet weather and the rain. Um, people are still out, that type of thing. So my point is going into 21, 22, 21, from what I'm hearing from other agencies when I'm on my calls, 21 is the critical year. So if 21 tanks, then obviously 22 is going to look really, really bad. If 21 recovers, then we'll be able to know what we're going to be doing for 22. Obviously, we're setting a budget for 21 and 22. Um, it's basically one budget for the two year, or well, one budget that covers two years, right? So, um, so when you're looking at this, 21 is going to be critical. Uh, if, if, if revenues do drop, obviously, we'll have to do these budget workshops again as we move into uh, the end of 21 to prepare us uh, for the worst for 22 or for uh, decreases in 22. I will say that we're having meetings with with uh, with certain groups um, to talk about contracts and different other things. And if the revenue does go down and the contract negotiations um, don't necessarily go to a reduction, we might have to come back to council with staff reductions, with personnel reductions, um, because we won't have another choice at that particular time to meet our target of what we've set for decreases in 21 and 22. So I wanna make the council aware um, that we might come back, right? Um, after we get this budget passed and we need to get it passed, right? So that's our, our document starting for 21 and 22. Then we have our project retreat. We have some other things that we're gonna be doing at the beginning of the year to see where we're at and then regroup from what we've seen from revenue for the end of the, of the last quarter. So I just wanted to, to uh, just to let the council know that there is a chance we might have to come back uh, with more reductions if, if, certain, if certain talks um, uh, are not met and we can't come to, uh, to an agreement. So uh, that's on the table as well. So thank you, Robert. Uh, Mayor, Mayor for Tampa Council. Council Member Ross. Um, Mr. Rinnemann, but you just stated on the union contracts, there's two that are expiring in 2021. Are you stating that we're, we're doing zero increase and we're going to negotiate or do we already include that in our um, overall budget and hopefully that we can re reduce the budget once we negotiate? Yeah, very, very good question, Council Member Ross and, and, and observation. Uh, yes, there's three unions. Um, Two of them, their contracts are up in 21. So I'm going to have talks tomorrow um, and ask uh, the budgets based on zero, uh, zero COLA all the way across union, non-union. That's what it's based on. Uh, we don't have a choice and we need to do that. Obviously, we're not touching anything else in the union contracts. We want to make sure um, that that's in there for our employees. However, the COLA um, is a big deal and it's a big cost for us. Um, we have one union contract we're negotiating right now that is fire. Uh, we're in the talks as we speak. Um, so that is up in 2020. So we're trying to figure out what to do with that and what the length of the contract is going to be. And that's strictly up to the negotiating you know, body. You know, if they want to do a shorter term contract, a longer term contract, that's what we're negotiating as well as what's going to be in that. Right? So then 21, we have police and teamsters that are up. So when I say the negotiations of what's going to happen in 21, we're going to have two bargaining unit contracts that are going to be up for renegotiation. What is that going to look like? And so I think 21 is going to be critical for all of us in the region to see where we are revenue wise. But this budget is based on 0% COLA across the board for all personnel. Um, that's going to help tremendously. We're still leaving some things in because we want to do that for our employees. However, uh, the COLA is a big cost, and um, it, it's something that, that we need to really, really think about. I mean, the mayor and the council, uh, you guys have been great to staff. Um, you've, you've been very forthgiving in the past, but we're in a unique situation, and being in a pandemic, it really, um, it really begs to, to question, you know, what are our taxpayers thinking? Where are we going? And, you know, are we going to basically... You know, be flat and, and, and then relook at things as we go on in 21. I mean, 21 could go like crazy up, right? We could get a huge economic vitality moving forward and then we'll readdress what we're doing. But 
I mean, probability says it won't happen that way. So we have to prepare for that. And I think that's what we're trying to do now, um, as, as well as talk about our capital, our non-utility capital and everything else we're looking at. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'll try to continue here. Um, and again, uh, please use the hand raise button if you have any questions and I appreciate that. Uh, so again, the government operating revenue, as we talked about, here's your differences. I just want to jump down to a couple of things that we did put in our projections for revenue that did change from May. These are the only things that changed since our revenue projections in May at this point. We did use the recovery scenario that we talked about, plus the assumption of the 1% property tax per year increase, including taking the bank capacity. So that would be council approving this year of taking the 1% for 2021, and then the same thing in 2022. And we also added 130,000 annually, which is um, roughly our share of the payment in lieu of taxes agreement with the Snoqualmie tribe that was actually uh, signed this and ratified this afternoon. So again, as I discussed before, with assumptions holding constant, expenditures would be over revenues by 426,000 in 2021. Expenditures would be under revenues by 206,000 in 2022. And I talked about the revision that we're gonna do at the end of October, early November. And again, when we talk about the 2020 base and what we were trying to target for decreases, we are decreasing. So again, what we're proposing to appropriate in our operating budget for our governmental operating funds for 2021 is $676,000 lower than the base of 2020. And in 2022, that figure is $488,000 lower than it was in 2020. Uh, Council Member Jeans. I was gonna ask you maybe to repeat what you just said. Did you just negotiate the PELT this afternoon? The PIL agreement, uh, I think Bob Sturbank's on and the mayor's on. Uh, yeah, that. thanks Robert and uh, good evening council. The, uh, we have been in discussion with the county and the tribe over the PIL MOU over the last several weeks um, and come to a tentative agreement. The tribe has signed it, Mayor Larson has signed it and the, the next step in the process is for it to be presented to the county executive um, with the understanding that it'd be effective October 1st. So. Uh, it's not quite uh, signed, sealed, and delivered, but fairly close. Yeah. Okay, so other major operating funds. I'm going to talk about when we said the changes since the roundtable. Uh, based on discussion, very productive discussion with FNA committee, uh, Kevin and I coordinated with IT, and we did take some, we took approximately $250,000 of capital outlay out of the projects. I'm gonna go through those um, just in a moment here and, and talk about that a little more. So you can see this category here, other major operating funds, uh, we actually decreased that amount. Now IT is an internal service fund, which means again, it, it survives off charge outs to other departments. So that number doesn't impact government operating but there is a savings compared to our original proposed budget of $250,000 in the IT fund specifically. And so when I go through the changes since the round table, uh, I discussed these uh, with the individual departments, but I'll discuss it here, city clerk. Um, we just had made an adjustment to uh, services and supplies. It was too high in the budget. We reviewed it again, made sure we made that correction. Uh, communications, we had added back uh, a one-time employee or one-time community survey funding for that in the budget for 2021. Fire and emergency management, uh, we had revisited with the fire chief after 824, but before the public safety committee regarding their equipment and um, budgeting for equipment needed and required equipment replacement needed. Um, in both fire and emergency management. So we did make some slight adjustments to their budget with that. Events, uh, with the events budget, again, we just, we factored in just a slightly higher um, projection on some of their supplies as well. And non-departmental, um, 
excluding the transfer, we just made a slight change on one of the transfers as well on that document. Police, um, and I did mention this during public safety committee, we were on police, we were actually reevaluating the charge outs and the allocations to North Bend as far as the staff members and the officers that we can charge to North Bend. Uh, we decided there was, there was one higher on the North Bend side that we needed to uh, incur on our side. That's the reason for the change. The police budget is still, uh, you'll get to see it's still not changing much. If I go back here, if you look for the 2020 appropriated budget, it is still under that. So again, that's just a correction from the A24 presentation. You can see the budget itself still 4.9 million. It is under the 5.25 million in 2020 appropriation. And for IT department, again, I just mentioned $250,000 reduction um, in that are one-time capital outlays that were passed for projects in 2019 and 20. And I'm gonna go down that list in just a moment here that uh, it was decided not to pursue. Council member Jeans. You're on mute, Bob. Sorry. Uh, in the facilities, you show a dramatic uptick in 2021 and a dramatic downward uh, movement in 22. Would you comment on that, please? Yes, I'm going to hand that to Drew because those are projects that are budgeted in that, that fund. So uh, thank you very much for your question, Council Member Jeans. Um, basically, what we're doing with this fund is we've actually established a facilities maintenance program as a part of the non-utility CIP. And so that program would actually be funded out of a CIP project fund, which is separate from the facilities maintenance division itself. So in essence, what we're doing is we're moving those capital outlay expenditures from the facilities maintenance division to a CIP project fund. Now, some of those funds that we had built up over time inside of that facilities maintenance division are actually there in order to support those capital expenditures that we would have normally done in the past or have done in the past in that facilities maintenance division. But now we need to move that funding, that cash that we collected over time in that fund over and into the CIP project fund because it's tied to that facilities maintenance program that we had built in the non-utility CIP. So we're moving expenditures uh, out of the facilities maintenance division and into a CIP project fund. And then we're taking the funding for that that we had built up over time of cash and moving that concurrently with those expenditures into a CIP project fund as well. So that's that whole transition that we're doing through that division and why you see those numbers uh, wildly increase for one year, but then decrease substantially for the next year is because we're doing, we're making this transition happen. Thanks, Drew. And Council Member Gs, just a quick reference point. On the sheets, and especially like facilities where I scroll down right now, we did try our best to put the explanations for every change on in the individual sheets. So when you go through the packet, you're gonna see those changes uh, called out and itemized for each department and division. Council Member Holloway. So the increase of the police department, you'll talk later in public safety. You had a 127K adjustment for yeah. something out of scope for the North Bend contract? It wasn't out of scope. It was we reevaluated the allocations of positions and we decided we were charging um, one that should have been charged to the city of Snoqualmie was being charged to North Bend just at least for the position budgeting for next for 2021. We made that correction. Yeah, we did go over it with the committee, but we can we can talk on the side with you about it if you'd like to. Councilmember Mayhew, Mayor Prep to Mayhew. Yeah, I just want to make sure I um, understood what you were saying about um, the uh, uh, facilities. So, with us now um, putting, am I correct? That, so I'm looking to see if this is correct. Um, 
with us now putting facilities as a capital category. So we hadn't really, you know, in the past under our capital funds called that out. So is it correct to understand that a lot of our facilities capital spending previously because of that was running through this revolving fund. And now that we've separately established that clearly as a, a, a in our capital funds, you're just taking out the capital spending and any accumulated monies for capital spending that were in this revolving fund and you're moving it over to capital. And so this revolving fund will now just purely be the ongoing maintenance charges. Is that, a, is that, was that? That's a very fair assessment of what's happening. Got it, thank you very much. Okay, so sorry if I'm making anybody dizzy. I'm gonna go back up to the front here and just run down the changes that we made in the IT department. So we were asked for a listing of one-time appropriations in 2019 and 2020. So I did my best to parse them out from all of the approved adjustments to the budget uh, that, that were approved in 2019-2020 by Indian. So again, these are just considered to be one-time only appropriations. Um, first, it was an active operating picture software. This was something that the previous IT director was proposing for a new program. That was an $18,000 total cost in 19 and 20. That cost is not continuing in this current budget. Broadband feasibility study, again, that was also something that the previous IT director was looking at. Uh, Kevin and I discussed, and if you have any questions for Kevin, he's also on tonight, I uh, could answer your questions. That was 15,000, that's not being continued. Civic engagement software, this is also something that was being researched at the time. It's approximately $22,500 total, um, plus a maintenance fee each year after that, that at this point we are not pursuing that in the 21-22 budget. Council Chambers audio visual upgrade, it was $25,000. Uh, we discussed this at FNA. I have taken this out. Um, if council wants us to put it back in, we definitely can do that for you. Enterprise content management software. Um, this was another project that we are not pursuing at this point. That's $100,000. Legislative management software that was to replace the agenda builder. That was $70,000. We're not pursuing that during the biennium at this point. And then for community development, the affordable housing study, we originally appropriated 200,000. There was a little bit less in the 2020 appropriation, but originally it was 200,000. That is not continuing at this point. Comprehensive fee study was under finance, 50,000 in 2019. That was no, that was not conducted. Uh, that's something that we are not continuing at this point. We could add it back. Again, any, we can add any of these back at the council request. So, and in the facilities maintenance and renovation plan, that was a master facilities plan, 100,000 that is also taken out of the budget. Council member Ross, and then council member Holloway. The enterprise content management software, is that the ERP system that we've been talking about or is this something different? No, ma'am, that is something different. Good. So we, we're keeping the ERP system in, right? Yes, ma'am. And that's a primary driver for pulling back from some of these other projects that were slated for this last biennium. Um, I want to make sure that we have capacity to deliver ERP because it is not a project that we can allow to fail or to drag on for too long without spending a lot more money. And so um, clearing the decks, making extra capacity so we can ensure that when we start off on this thing, we're on a good foot. Okay. And, and can I continue? Help. Um, so thank you. I'm glad that that is going to be in this, in the budget, the affordable housing study. So by taking this out, our, we have a council goal and it's rated, I guess, ranked number three, um, to do the affordable housing. And, and so we need to, you know, decide, are we going to change our, our council goals? Are we going to try to reconcile? between the budget and affordable housing. Um, there's a couple house bills that are um, 
we approved one that'll provide some funding. There's another one that we might get some funding through. Um, so those might be some options, but do we need to, we probably need to look and see if we want to put some additional funding in for the affordable housing study. I, I would not see this necessarily um, modifying the council goals as much as suspending or delaying it. Yeah. Uh, that was part of the conversation we had at the beginning of the conversations at the beginning of the year on the work study following the what we thought was a pretty disastrous or challenging fiscal quarter the fourth quarter of 2019 uh, before the two you know the COVID further challenges hit um, so that would be more the, re the result of it but anyway that's the only comment I wanted to add. Council Member Holloway. So this uh, so two questions one the 600,000 is above and beyond the 462 or included in calculating the 462? No, some of that was 2019. That was not carried to 2020. We were just asked for a total of what was not carried over from the previous biennium. So not all of that is included in that number. And again, these are in different pots of money, some of them. You've got the IT fund, that 250,000 did come off the top of that. But CD, for example, that appropriation was over two years. And so not all of that 200,000 was in the 2020 base budget. Same thing with the comprehensive fee study that was in 2019, not in the 2020 base budget. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so I, I still, I guess I request that uh, the IT stuff get reviewed in FNA, that we get a little deeper, we scratch the surface a little bit, decide if we might wanna make an argument to bring it back on the table so that we understand what's going on. Same thing with uh, affordable housing should go to community development uh, and decide if some figure wants to come back on the tables, you know, 200,000 or something less, but we may want to uh, scratch a little deeper. So can we take this discussion back to the committees and bring it back around? <laughs> uh, if, if there's council concurrence on that. My, my, the only caveat or, or request that I would have would be if you take it back to committee and anything you want to put on the table, then you have to give a solution to how that happens. In other words, say what else comes off the table in order to bring something back on the table, or are you recommending to the full council to take it out of reserves? <laughs> in other words, further further dipping into to, uh, rainy day reserves. Right. It's got to be a good argument to bring back on. Is the rest of the council want to do that or do not want to do that? I think we could back up in um, community development. Yeah, I, I agree for community development. I guess I, I had the impression that the committees were all still going to be looking at their budgets this next, uh, you know, next week. And so, and that two weeks from now, we hear from committees that we as a group would hear from committees if they had any recommendations to alter the, um, the proposed budget in ways other than what uh, the mayor's already altering it. Uh, they, they summarized earlier some of the things that have changed as a result of those committee discussions. But uh, I was, I guess I thought that would be going on. And I certainly support that that would go on for another week. And then hopefully we'll hear out as a group two weeks from now from the committees on anything they think we ought to consider as, as changes. And then we consider that as a group. Council Member say I think you had your, you had a question. That was my understanding as well, Councilmember Mayhew. And so that's why I certainly had no concerns about those conversations going back to the committees. So I, I'm not hearing any protests or opposition to it. So we'll, we'll proceed on that premise as suggested by Councilmember Holloway. Robert, my hand, my hand was up suggesting that yes, I am in support of uh, discussing these at committee. And if that occurs for the benefit of the committee or benefit of the whole council as well, I just wanted to mention on the ERP system, uh, we did have appropriation in 2019 and 2020 that we spent very little on. 
that uh, we did not continue into the current fiscal to the upcoming biennial budget. What we're trying to do right now is we're trying to cost out the systems. Uh, Kevin and I had a very good discussion on this on Friday. We're trying to cost out the systems, which modules that would go alive during the next biennium, any financing. We, we think that some financing might be available and a mix of what can we charge to utility as well, when you think of utility billing and asset management, for example. And so we do not have a dollar figure yet. But part of that is, if you remember, PJ did set aside revenues um, for 10 years for an ERP replacement. But of course, the ERP replacement, the longer we wait, the more expensive it gets. Just a side note, when we talk about these other IT projects, it's competing for the same pot of money. So if we do need additional, in the end, if we need additional fund balance for the ERP project, um, some of these projects here would compete for that same pot of money. I just wanted to put that out there, but we can talk in further detail in committee. Hello? And Council, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm curious what, where in these tables is the ERP that you're just now discussing? Like I said, it was in the capital improvement project. So it's in the non-utility CIP. The appropriate, we do not have an appropriation amount yet because we're going to be allocating it based on the modules that we end up purchasing or recommend purchasing in the final contract. Amount of financing that's available to the city because we're actually looking at a financing option right now. Um, so we are not prepared yet with the dollar figure. So this will come back to council. That particular piece will come back to council. Councilor May Mayhew has his hand up again. I just want to do a quick, quick time check. We have about 10 minutes left. So we can have a five minute break before the uh, council meeting. Yeah, yeah, so I just had uh, two questions. Um, one is, I was just thinking back to um, uh, Mr. Rudmetkin's comments earlier with, and, and sort of thinking if, if we were to adopt this budget um, with some of these projects that didn't happen in 1920 and aren't being proposed in 2122 because of the budget limitations, if it's similar to what he mentioned in 22, if, if we get a better recovery, um, it would seem like some of these could be considered then if, if we see we've got revenue to cover it, we could add back in. So, so my first question is, is that a, a legitimate or, or an appropriate way of thinking about this? And then my second question, uh, it has to do with just one of the items on this list, with the, which is the council chambers AV upgrade, which of course we're not using that right now because we're not in the council chambers, but uh, um, assuming we get back in there one day, I was just curious, was there a significant um, operating savings that we thought that would achieve or was it really more about efficient, uh, just um, effectiveness and so on? Uh, or was there a significant operating savings potential annually related to that particular project? Uh Mayor Pro Tem Mayhew, uh, the way it was briefed to me is that there were several deficiencies in the way that the original system was set up and the layout of the room. Uh, that was one of the reasons for that project. The next is, is that uh, my staff spends considerable time each and every meeting uh, setting up and um, manipulating that current system because it's getting a little bit long in the tooth and out of date. Uh, and so from an efficiency standpoint and an operational time uh, for IT staff, uh, it was a, a cost savings there. Do you have any sense of, and I know it would just be ballpark, but, and if you don't have one, then fine, but do you have any sense of how much that might save us on an annual basis in those staff costs? So, I mean, you know, is this an opportunity to spend some money to save some money that, you know, might largely offset it? I wish I had some better numbers for you, but I, I, I was looking back through the tickets we, uh, and time tracking we spent uh, since my, I've started. And we typically spend three to five hours per week uh, configuring and, and making sure that that system is up and running for any meeting that following week. Uh, if we've done any major um, out of band meetings that have required us to reconfigure the system in a bigger way, uh, that number goes up, I think, seven to 10 hours uh, to get it back and ready to go for council meetings. All right. Well, maybe in the future, if you were able to sort of 
come up with a number you were comfortable saying, yeah, it might save us, you know, X or if you want to give us very X to Y per year, it might just might be nice to know that in the future. Um, yes, sir. I'll get that. And uh, we're currently working out a, a blended rate for what our hourly charges are across the department. So that'll come in handy for getting you know, that number. All right. And then, then it was just my first question about, is that, you know, thinking about potentially adding these back if things uh, improve in the outlook, is that a reasonable way to think about this? Well, except you have a four hundred sixty-two thousand dollar hole, you might want to fill. But yeah. Oh, maybe I misunderstood. I think none of these projects are in there, and we still got a four sixty-two hole. So adding any of these back in there, I think, would make that hole worse. So, what I'm, I guess, I'm assuming that that is true. Maybe Mr. Ramud could verify if that's the case. Well, and that statement is mostly true the uh, my understanding is the council chambers was in the budget for the biennial so that would be a change could you help us out mr hamoud yeah so again this is the internal service fund for it we're charging it out to the general fund mm -hmm. so adding these projects back would not impact the general fund however it would impact our fund balance to do larger projects such as the erp if it comes in over budget so it could end up, you know, taking money away from other projects that would have a higher priority. Uh, thank you, so, thank you, Mr. Holloway. But it also depends on what the council's priority is. The council's priority is the AV upgrade. Obviously, we would do that above everything else if that's what we decided. So we listen to you. I just, I see, I didn't understand exactly how this was working. Thank you. You're welcome. But just to clarify, also, uh, Robert, the, the council chamber's AV upgrade was eliminated as a change since the last committee meeting in part due to Councilman Holloway's request, correct? Yes, that was discussed. Yes, that's why we took it out. And I, I apologize if I misunderstood, but that's that's how I interpreted it. Okay, moving on, unless there's any more questions on that point. Uh, Council Member Jeans had a question last week on the tourism plan, so I just wanted to clarify for everybody. The tourism plan was never its own appropriation request. It was actually funded by a $30,000 line item, excuse me, a $35,000 line item we have each year in the planning department under economic development program expenditures. So uh, that money was from existing. Um, and again, it could be funded in the future through again, that existing base budget if necessary. Or if it does, it continues to appear that there isn't much tourism going on for the next two years, and the council decides not to, that that's some thirty thirty five thousand dollars you could reduce that, you know, a pressure on the um, on the rainy day fund. And so I think I discussed the next steps a little bit um, before here. Again, council will continue to deliberate and tentatively approve the expenditure budget this month and next month, early next month. Forecast a revenue update. Again, we're slated for late October, early November. We really can't do it sooner. Again, just not having that data available. So we don't want to have to come back more than once to make that change. So again, we wanna see where our revenues are coming in for both property tax and sales tax during that time period. Um, wish I could have it sooner, but that's the best we could do. We actually asked the county um, if they were expecting any delays um, because of all the, you know, the late payments for property tax, uh, they will not have any delays, at least uh, according to their office last week, they won't have any delays to the property tax data this year. And again, the detailed non-utility CIP update, I know we've had some questions on that. That'll occur in early 2021, probably at the next council retreat would be the start of that, that process. Uh, do we have, we have about eight minutes left. Do we have any other questions or any particular focus on the budget that any council member would like to bring up before we conclude tonight? All right, you have anything else to move on to? We, we have a fairly late light agenda tonight at the regular council meeting, so we do anticipate having time to go over more details here if the time allows. Or have you, or have you covered all the high level overview for the entire general fund, Robert? Now it's a matter of starting to go into each department. Yes, that's correct. Okay. 
certainly no harm to spend time going into a few of the departments, but. Uh, All right, with that, uh, I don't think anyone's gonna complain if we maybe break a little bit early and give you uh, seven minutes of a break before the regular city council meeting. Uh, so let's let's do that. Um, you can remain on online here if you'd like, and we'll just be back in seven minutes and sharp it, uh, start at seven o'clock sharp. Uh, with that, the special budget workshop of the city council is, is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.
Kevin or, <clears throat> Kevin or whoever has control of the meeting, could you pre please uh, bring Ryan Stokes in as a participant, please? Thank you. Good evening, Ryan. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Mayor. Thanks for having me. All right, I do see a <clears throat> quorum of the council. So with that, I will call the some uh, basically uh, open us uh, call the Snoqualmie City Council meeting to order and uh, ask that uh, so the city clerk please take the roll call. Councilmember Jeans. Here. Councilmember Ross. Here. Councilmember Holloway. Here. Councilmember Mayhew. Here. Councilmember Lassay. Here. Councilmember Sundwall. Here. Councilmember Shepherd. Here. Mayor Larson. I am here. Thank you, Judy. I believe that all are present and accounted for. So with that, I'll ask for a, a motion and a second to approve the uh, tonight's agenda as presented. So moved. Second. A motion and a second to approve tonight's agenda. Is there any questions or discussion? Yes. Councilmember Shepherd, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to take the uh, warrants off of the consent agenda and also um, AB 20-079, well, basically all of the um, agenda bills. Okay. Uh, any other further discussion or comments or request council? All right, with the changes as noted by Council Mayor Shepard, all those, uh, all those who approve are in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Nay. No. Nay. No. And I'm gonna do that. Jody, can you please do the vote by roll call, please? Council Member Keynes. Aye. Council Member Ross. No. Councilmember Holloway. Aye. Councilmember Mayhew. No. Councilmember Lassay. No. Councilmember Sundwall. No. Councilmember Shepherd. Yes. Three yeas, four, four nays. Motion oh. out. Okay, I guess I'll open up for discussion again. We're still, uh, why? Um, well, this what's, is there to discuss, what's there to discuss other than how do we proceed in this first time ever? Well, right now I don't have a motion on the table to discuss. It's it's failed and I can't move on with a council meeting without a, an agenda bill approved. I mean, I'm sorry, without, without an agenda approved. So any ideas, any other further motions? Move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn tonight's meeting. Is there any discussion? Oh, I understand, information. Yeah, I understand there's some frustration about taking Councilmember Shepard removing items from the consent agenda, but by virtue of the definition of consent agenda, um, so in full right. There has to be full consent. So, Councilmember Mayhem? Uh, just point of information. Um, the agenda bills, um, so not asking about the warrants, but asking about the agenda bills. If those agenda bills that are on tonight's proposed agenda were not to be taken up for another two weeks, uh, would that uh, impact uh, the ability of either the city or any other organizations to function as they need to? That's a great question. I'll throw that out to the staff to respond to. Um, or not the two school district, uh, the resolution and ordinance, we can take those up again at the end of September. And how about, um, Mr. Mayor, there is a project award here. Um, I don't know if we have public works staff on the meeting call who could speak to the length of time that the bid is good for, but uh, anytime there's delay and actually awarding a project and getting the contract signed, there's, there's a risk that the city could lose the bid uh, and then further there just obviously that there's 
delay in award means delay in start and completion of the project. Thank you. That's the next one I was going to ask about or ask Brian if you could weigh in on the accepting of the uh, yes. small of the agenda bill 81, 081 and 082. Yes, that one is uh, time sensitive. We'd like to get that done before the uh, heavy heaviest of the wet season starts because that is relocating the sewer main away from the river. Uh, mm -hmm. It's part of uh, uh, our protection of our wastewater resources. Um, and we'd like, if we offer, if we get approval soon to move forward with this project, we can get it done here um, uh, before the end of the year. Okay, I just do I want to add, to add that uh, item uh, to our own to the uh, currently empty agenda. I'm sorry, I didn't understand that requester. I move to add that item to our currently empty agenda. Well, that, uh, that can't be done until we have the current motion on the floor. That's not a, that's not a sub motion. What was the current motion? The current motion is to, to adjourn tonight's meeting. Oh, oh. gotcha. That's what's currently being discussed. So I, I want to, I want to um, just remind all the council members that just because something's on the consent agenda doesn't mean council members can't ask clarifying questions and have discussion on those items. It just, it just offers more efficiency to be able to discuss those items all at once and you know, move them and, and approve them all in one motion, but you can certainly. Yeah, I think the problem there is, is the council member who removed them all, attended all the meetings and made exactly zero comments on any of these agenda bills. I understand the, the whole purpose of having. Yeah. Cal Councilor Shepard, you wanted to weigh in on the motion to adjourn. No, I'm not, I don't want to adjourn. I, I wasn't suggesting that the agenda bills be removed altogether. I'm just suggesting that they move off the consent agenda into the regular part of the agenda. Everybody clearly understood that. Thank you. Uh, Rick, did you want to comment? And then I'll go to Councilman Holloway. Yeah, just real quick, Mayor, and uh, uh, forgive me for, for being not informed, but the motion, the original motion on the table was to pull items off consent. That motion failed. Could we just do a motion to approve the agenda as stated and get a get a the, get an approval to move it then everything stays on consent everything is normal right i mean correct me if i'm wrong you're wrong you're wrong by council rules and procedures. <laughs> okay any, any single council Sorry, Rick, you're wrong <laughs> okay i'm just throwing it out there <laughs> if any single councilman requests that an item be taken off the consent agenda it must be removed because uh, then it's not technically consent um so but also by council rules and procedures, we can address it immediately after the, the uh, what's left of a consent agenda is, is debated or discussed. Um, I think the council members are just expressing their frustration. Here. But then, but that leaves me with no agenda approval. If they if they're not approving of that, then I can't. I don't have a meeting. I don't have an agenda. Point of order, Mayor. I'm going to go to Councilmember Holloway first, and I'll come back. To, oh, I'm sorry. Point of order. Go ahead. Point of order. I'm questioning whether a motion to adjourn is debatable. Uh, I don't know, Jody or Bob Sturbank, you want to weigh in on that? Uh, my apologies, sorry, I'm trying to get Council I would need to check. Uh, just cheat moment, sheet. please. Councilor May who's clearly has his cheat sheet in front of him, so. <laughs> I need one of those. <laughs> rank 12, not debatable. <laughs> Meaning it's the second highest rank. Councilmember Holloway, why uh, the city attorney or Jody's looking that up. Do you want to, did you have another comment? I just, uh, let's keep in mind the consent agenda was put on as an efficiency effort to move non uh, concern agenda items forward quickly through council meetings because we typically run out of time. Uh, I am deeply concerned that you are considering dereliction of duty as instigated by poor etiquette and manners of a fellow council member. That is Peggy's problem, but dereliction of duty if you adjourn now is yours. All right. Point of now, order. No, no, I'm not respecting council members' point of order, so also I'll go to Sturbank. Yeah, the point of order is correct that a motion to adjourn is not debatable. All right. Under Robert's rules. 
All right, with that, no further discussion, we'll immediately go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, which is to, to immediately adjourn the meeting, say aye. All those opposed, say nay. No. No. Okay. Would someone like to make another motion so we can have a meeting? I would like, I would like a roll count on that motion, please. <laughs> if, you're, if you're gonna put a motion forward, you, ought, you should all have at least vote for it. If you're not, you're wasting all of our times, which is just as bad as what got us here to begin with. I, I think it was in the end. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, council members Mayor. should not speak to the motives or, or dismiss other council members' methods at which the discussion shall occur. Now, the, 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 the sustained. And I'll further say that I think the, the vote was pretty clear that uh, the, the vast majority, if not, super majority, if not almost unanimously voted no on the motion. So the meeting will not be adjourned tonight. We will move on. Councilmember Hallway, did you have another motion? Yeah, move to approve the agenda with only the warrants removed from consent agenda. You can't do that. that. Well, he, he can, but then during discussion, the council member can request they be removed again, so. I second. A motion a second to approve. The attorney's gonna tell me I'm wrong. To approve the uh, agenda tonight with, with only the warrants removed. Go ahead, Bob, Officer Bank. Uh, I was just gonna point out that the council can waive its rules with respect to the consent agenda in order to allow uh, the motion that was just made. Thank you, Bob, I, I forgot about that. They, they can vote to suspend rules, um, so. Okay, can I modify my motion? You can withdraw it if you'd like. I'd, I'd rather modify it to have a uh, move to suspend council rules and approve the agenda as presented with only the warrants moved from consent agenda. Okay, before I ask for the second, I want to ask Bob Sturbank to say, does that suffice? To, or did he have to say something more specific about what portion of the rules is being suspended? I think that's sufficient, Mayor. I believe the, council, the motion is referring to the council rules governing uh, removal of items from the consent agenda. Okay, very good. I will second only so we can discuss it for a second, which I'd like to lead out on. Thank right. you. We needed a second. Thank you. The motion is suspect. Motion a second to uh, suspend the council rules and procedures regarding consent agenda and, and approve the agenda as presented without the, with the exception of removing the warrants from the agenda packet or from the consent agenda. Did I capture that correctly, Councilmember Holland? All right. Uh, any further questions or discussion? Uh, Councilmember Sunwell, I'll go to you and then. So um, as crazy as I think this all is, um, and anyway, I, I don't, I, as much as I'd like to vote yes for this, even though I seconded, um, I think it's a little bit dangerous to do this without a longer conversation about what we want those rules to be. Um, as much as I um, disagree with um, four straight years or three straight years of having warrants and stuff removed just and not paying employees, um, I do think we need to have a longer discussion about whether this is systematically the right call to make versus a one-off one evening. So I will vote against this even though I seconded it. All right, Councilor Mayhew and then uh, Shepard and Holloway. Yeah, so I, I think we should think long and hard about the notion of any of us being forced to vote on two or more things in a single vote because it takes away our ability if we wanted to vote for one of them and against another if we're forced into making a single decision about two or more, I think that puts any of us, any council member in a horrible position that we should never put ourselves in. So as frustrated as I am with the, the delaying every meeting, uh, our, our efficiency is, is, we're delayed and delayed for no apparent purpose um, other than just to frustrate us um, as much as uh, I am frustrated with that, I think that our only, uh, I, I don't think we should ever take away uh, or force someone to make a single vote on two or more matters. So I'm against this. Councilmember Shepard. Oh, I, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do this, but I would like to have everything taken off the consent agenda. Uh, Councilmember Shepard, if you could just speak to the motion, please. 
Are you for or against the motion? Did you want to make any comments about that? I'm against. Oh. All right, thank you. Any further discussion, Council? Does anybody need any clarification on what the motion is before we go to vote? Yeah, can you restate the motion? Uh, Councilor Holloway, you want to restate it? <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> Move to suspend council uh, procedures for the sole purpose of approving the agenda as presented tonight with only the warrants removed from consent. Okay. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. No. I only heard two nays and I heard three eyes. I'm missing a couple. Jody, could you please do a quick roll call vote? Councilmember Gaines? Nay. Councilmember Ross? Yes. Councilmember Holloway? No. Councilmember Mayhew? No. Councilmember Lassay? Aye. Councilmember Sundwall? No. Councilmember Shepard? No. The motion fails four to three. The last vote was the decisive vote. All right. May I make, I'd like to make a motion? Go ahead, Councilmember Sundwall. To basically start over, I move to, uh, to approve the agenda. Um, Minus all minus warrants and um, essentially as uh, Councilmember Shepard wanted it originally. Okay. So move to move to approve the agenda, removing the warrants and all the agenda bills from the consent agenda. That's correct. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Right. Motion and a second, as stated by Councilmember Sunwall. I don't think we need further discussion. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Nay. No. Sounds like a uh, five to two vote in favor of the motion. So the motion is approved. We now have an agenda and we have a, have a meeting. All right, with that, uh, we don't have any uh, public hearings, presentations or proclamations tonight. So we'll move on to citizens comments. We do have one citizen in attendance. Uh, I haven't seen Anna here before. So I'll try to quickly go over some of the protocols on this. Um, Well, Suquamish so citizens have a right to have their elected representatives perform their duties on behalf of the city in an efficient and orderly manner. Therefore, comments for those that do attend a meeting will be limited to three minutes each. Please wait to be recognized and state your name and address for the record. Direct your comments to the council as a whole and not to individual members. In order to protect the privacy rights of employees and protect the members of the public from legal liability, please note that this is not the appropriate venue to make complaints or accusations about an implied or named city employee or agent. Such oral comments will not be allowed, but can be submitted in writing to the city clerk. Please note that this is not the time to ask questions of the council mayor staff or to engage in debate. The council will simply quietly and respectfully listen to your concerns and please respect the decorum of these proceedings as all due respect will be afforded to you. So with that, is there any member of the public that would like to comment at this time? And the way you would do that is under um, in the participants box, if you hit the participants button at the bottom of the screen, a box will open up and in the bottom right hand corner, there's a little button that says raise hand. And if you push on that button, you can have an opportunity to speak or be recognized. All right, so I don't see any hands going up. If for some reason it's because it just took a little time to uh, figure that out, go, go ahead and re still raise your hand and I'll try and come back to you if we can. So with that, we're gonna move on to the consent agenda. All light items um, or the item listed below, below will be enacted by one motion. Action item, the action item includes the minutes for the August 24, 2020 round table and regular meeting. Uh, and that's it. So do I have a motion to second council? Do I have a second? Second. Right, motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right. Wait, let me just be quick. The only thing on the consent agenda was a minutes, right? And they were just uh, disapproved by the one council member that wanted to take everything else off. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the motion. Uh, uh, it succeeds, it's passed, uh, the consent agenda is approved, uh, six to one. 
All right, so we're going to move on immediately to Agenda Bill 2079, Resolution 1547, adopting the Snoqualmie Valley School District Capital Facility Plan 2020 to 2025. I have a motion on this. So I, I assume this is out of the, um, well, I'm sorry, it's it's coming out of the Community Development Committee. So, could, so if the chair of the Community Development Committee could pull it up and read in the motion, please, a summary statement of the motion. I think that F and A. Is that F and A? Jim, do you want me to read it as I chair it, or do you want to read it? If you would, please, Council Member uh, Hallway. All uh, right. Let me get to the page. Councilmember Shepard, did you have a question why Councilmember Hallway is finding that? On this bill, yeah, I do. Um, let's I just, to... Councilmember Shepard, let's wait till the motion's on let's the wait. floor. Okay. Can you, all right. So Colony Valley School District number 410 also have executed an internal agreement to implement school impact fees. The Squamy Vicinity Comprehensive Plan provides that the annual update of the capital facilities plan be adopted by the city council by resolution. This resolution is the basis for the school district fee impact study and will uh, be set by ordinance. Move to adopt resolution adopting the Squamish Valley School District Capital Facilities Plan 2020. May I have a second? Mm -hmm. Motion and second to approve agenda bill 2079 as stated by Councilmember Holloway. Uh, Councilmember Shepard, you had a question. Yeah, um, in, in this plan, it has a fee of 11, approximately $11,000 for single family dwellings and about five thousand dollars for multifamily dwellings. When when was the last time that this was updated, and how much were the impact fees last time? It's updated annually. But I'll turn it over to Ryan Stokes or invite Ryan to. Yep, I can answer that. Uh, so last year the fees were updated, and the single family was. Ryan, 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 could you introduce yourself and let let oh, anybody? Sure. Who you are? Hi everyone, uh, Ryan Stokes. I'm assistant superintendent of finance and operations for the school district. Um, and the single family rate last year in 2019 was 10,825. So the proposed rate is a reduction of $275. The multifamily rate um, last year was $3,432. And so the proposed rate is an increase of $1,300. And the driver of that, uh, in those changes are primarily uh, student generation rates coming out of recent con construction of those types of, of uh, dwellings. And I have one other question. Um, it, are we are all cities charged the same amount? Uh, the school district proposes the same amount for all cities okay. within the district. But each district has uh, each school district calculates their own uh, their own fee. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other questions, comments, C Councilmember Ross? So, Mr. Stokes. You mentioned it's because of a student concentration in multifamily. Is that because there's an increase and so you're charging 38% more? It's, there's a number of factors. It's a great question. Uh, there's a number of factors that drive the, uh, the formula that's been established for calculating a, student, a school impact fee. Um, the main driver of our changes this year was the student generation rate. So every year um, uh, we use Issaquah and Lake Washington student generation rates. So they track how many students came out of recent developments over the last six years. And so uh, every year those rates will change based on how many students are coming out of new construction. So there was a, uh, I think it was from 2019 to 2020, the, the student generation rates for the multifamily Um, went up by 28% of multifamily. So a lot more a lot coming out of multifamily. For the last four years, a student rates from multifamily dwellings have increased by 75%. So a lot more, a lot more students coming out of multifamily uh, dwellings than they, they were four years ago. Okay, thank you. Ryan, and thank you for your patience tonight, Ryan. 
happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Glad to be able to answer questions. Yeah, I appreciate that. Any other questions or comments at this time, Council? All right, hearing no further questions or discussion, all those in favor of Agenda Bill 20079, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Right. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to Agenda Bill 20081, Resolution 1551, determining the lowest responsible response of bidder and awarding and authorizing execution of a small works public works contract with PGH Excavating Incorporated for the sewer relocation at Meadowbrook Station project. I thought, uh, Matt, do you want to, since you chaired the meeting, would you mind jumping in on this? Yes, I need to. I can't read it on the screen. I have to put it on the other yeah. screen here. You got to get really close to that screen. Or just be not as old. Do I need to read the summary statement and motion or just? Uh, yes, please. Summary and motion. Okay. Uh, summary. This project was identified in the Utility Capital Improvements Plan CIP Project ID SWR18002CIP. The intent of this project is to relocate a sewer main that conveys wastewater to the Meadowbrook lift station. The project was advertised for bid on the MRSC Small Works roster. Eight bids were received from interested contractors. The winning bid came in lower than the engineer's estimate by approximately 12%. Move to adopt resolution 1551, determining the lowest responsible responsive bidder and awarding and authorizing execution of a small works public works contract with PGH Excavating Inc. for the sewer relocation at Meadowbrook Lift Station project and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve agenda bill 20081 as stated by Council Member Say. Is there any discussion, Council? I just want to see ahead of time. I mean, the nice thing about this coming off of the consent is it's a, it's a good story. But, um, as has often been the case when we sort of hit recessions or difficult times, we get uh, more hungry bids, and this one did come in under, under bid, and Brian would be happy to comment to that if you want. Council Member Shepard, go ahead. Do you have a question? Council Member Shepard, you may be muted. I don't hear anything. Okay, so in the, I, I guess the staff report, it said that the city has incurred about 39,000 against the project design. I'm assuming that's for the design and has another 95,000 in outstanding contractual value. And I'm guessing it's designed. So is, it, is the design still in progress or what is, what is that amount of money for? Uh, <clears throat> The, the design was for, for to put together the actual engineering drawings that the contractors bid on. So that, that work is complete. Okay, so 39,000 was for the design, but there's another 95,000 that's coming for more design work. Is that right? Not for this particular project. We rescoped this project in, in, uh, and reduced the scale of this project by, uh, by coming up with a, a, a different um, more cost-effective solution. So this project's probably uh, not going to spend that amount likely. It but it's budgeted higher than than the amount we're likely going to spend overall on this project. Okay, that's good news. And also, um, it, in the CIP, it talks about um, future funding might be needed for 1.2 million dollars. Yeah, the what that is is for uh, basically a revetment. There's with the lowering of the weir on Snoqualmie River, it's changed the course of the river up and down, well, really up through North Bend. And what that's causing is some erosion uh, in the county, seeing erosion throughout the, sh the river above the Snoqualmie Falls. So we're currently working with the county on develop developing plans for that. They, The county had done the revetment years ago um, but it, it's likely going to need to be rebuilt. So we're currently working with them to try and uh, move that along. They've got a lot of repairs to make on that river uh, to revetments and bank protection after the lowering of the weir. And this is one of the locations that uh, needs to be repaired. So that's going to be a separate discussion, but um, our current discussions with them uh, are, are, are over that particular project. And, and we're trying to negotiate with them a solution that, you know, they did it before, we'd like to see them continue and do it again. So we separated this project off. That's a longer, bigger discussion. This is something we, we need to do 
in, in immediate terms to protect our system. So um, this, Brian? this, yes. Brian, Chair, uh, discussions of future capital projects while related are not germane to the motion on the table. Sustain. I'll sustain the, the point of order by Councilor Holly. Point of order. Go ahead, Councilor Shepard. Um, I, I'm concerned about this project. I, I would like to understand the 1.2 million. Is that already approved in the CIP or is that something to be approved in the future? That would be a to be in the future that will come to you for discussion should that project uh, move forward. Yeah, the 1.2 million is not directly related to the project, so I already sustained the council member's point of order. So if we could keep, again, keep the questions and comments related directly to this agenda bill, that would be great. Uh, Council, okay. Councilor Holloway, did you have a further comment? Uh, just mechanics, who's ever doing the presentation, could you zoom in a little bit on the agenda? So those of us in the AR, AARP range can actually read it. Thank you. That's it for me. All right, Council, is any other further questions or comments? Discussion? Uh, Councilor Mayhem. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask um, Mr. Kraus if uh, the informational questions such as you received uh, in tonight's discussion, are you open to receiving those queries by uh, email, uh, say in advance of the meeting, say between the time of a Parks and Public Works Committee where this has gone over and a council meeting, would that generally be something you'd be open to receiving an email uh, request on that sort of information request? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem, absolutely, we'd be receptive to that. Thanks. Uh, Councilor Shepard, did you leave your hand up or do you have another comment or question? I have another comment is sometimes I get answers, sometimes I don't when I do an email. And I think it's also helpful for the uh, public to hear some of the- Point of order. Yeah, I, I, I gave- I was in relevant to what we're talking about. Yeah, nor, nor was Councilor Mayhew's comment, so I was indulging both, but uh, I'll sustain the point of order and ask everybody to, again, stay-, stay make, Keep their comments restricted to the agenda bill and on the on the table. All right. Um, seeing no further hands up, no further discussion. I'll move to a vote. All those in favor of approving the agenda bill twenty zero eight one, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. All right. Motion is approved unanimously. Moving on to agenda bill twenty zero eight two, resolution fifteen fifty two, accepting the water reclamation facility phase two improvements project as complete. Uh, Water Reclamation Facility Phase Two Improvements was approved for advertisement on October 9, 2016 with Agenda Bill 17-146 and was included in the city's adopted capital improvement plan, approved 2012 General Sewer Comprehensive Plans and the 2015 Engineering Report for the Water Reclamation Facility Improvements. The project is complete, including all construction activities and closeout procedures. Staff recommends approval for closeout of the Water Reclamation Facility Phase Two project. Move to adopt Resolution 1552, accepting the Water Reclamation Facility Phase Two improvements project as complete, and authorize the mayor to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Agenda Bill 2082, as stated by Councilmember Lasse. Is there any discussion, Council? Councilmember Shepard. Uh, yeah, I, this was uh, has been around for a long time. Time and I was just curious uh, why. Uh, question: Why what? I think she wants to know why it's it's a massive project. It took a long time to finish. She's wondering why it took so long to do the final improvement or get this agenda built before the council. Brian, do you want to take that point, one? Point of order: Project schedule is not up for debate. It's whether to accept the conveyance of this into the city. Uh, I'll sustain. Any other questions or com Councilmember Shepard, did you have another question? Nope. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. Seeing none, we'll move to a vote on agenda bill 2082. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. All right. Motion is approved unanimously. Uh, with that, we will move on to ordinances, finance administration committee agenda bill 2080 ordinance updating the school impact fees pursuant to ordinance number 826 in chapter 20.10 of the Snoqualmie Municipal Code. 
Uh, this is only for introduction tonight, so if you could just read the summary statement only, please. So uh, same offer, Mayor Pro Tem, you want me to read it? Yes, please, Council Member Holloway. Chapter 20.10 of the Sequoia Municipal Code establishes provisions for the assessment and collection of school impact fees pursuant to RCW Chapter 82.02. Chapter 20.10.100 requires that the fee schedule be reviewed and updated by the council on an annual basis after the council receives the district's plan and data required. And for introduction only tonight. Yeah, so again, this is for consideration in a couple of weeks or for, for possible approval. Um, any discussion or questions this time, council? Well, first, let me ask if there's any member of the public that would like to comment on this item prior to possible future action. And again, you can just use the raise hand button in the bottom of the participants box. And no action. Again, council, any further discussion on this item? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. Yeah. Just for introduction tonight. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to, there, there's no report items. I'll, I'll kick it over to Rick to know if, the, uh, or some of the staff, if there's uh, some quick COVID-19 updates. Well, I guess, yeah, the big, or oh, go ahead. Did I miss one? Warrants. Warrants. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So under reports, um, well, let me, I also forgot to report to Parks and Public Works Committee, any report? Uh, no report. Community Development Committee report. No report. All right, Finance Administration Committee will take up the warrants at this time. So if someone could make a motion a second to approve the warrants, please. Near you, Jim. Go ahead, please, Councilmember Holloway. All right. Move to approve the warrants as presented in the uh, council agenda. Second. All right, I have a motion a second to approve the warrants as presented. Uh, any further discussion? Does the chair of the committee want to speak to this uh, before I go to anyone else? I'll defer to Council Member Holloway. We, re we reviewed warrants, had discussions. The uh, acceptance memo was uh, slightly off in math that has been corrected and presented here tonight. All right, thank you. Councilmember Shepard, then Councilmember Lassane. Thank you, I'm not voting for the warrants because I can't get any access to seeing the details. All right, Council Member Uh Mr. Mayor, if you could ask the committee if they received any questions regarding warrants or, or received or any uh, correspondence uh, mm -hmm. regarding the warrants from any other uh, participants other than those on the committee. No, we did not. Thank you. All right, Councilmember Shepard, did you have another comment? Yes. Um, it's really hard to ask a question when you can't look at the warrants. Okay. I don't see any further hands up for discussion, so we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of approving the warrants, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. No. Motion passes six to one. <laughs> Is there any other report for Finance Administration Committee? No further report. Public Safety Committee report. No report. All right, so we're now coming up to the committee the whole one of an opportunity to probably get back to the um, the uh, regular uh, the roundtable discussion on the fiscal work plan. But before we do that, I wanted to ask Rick or some of the staff if there was a, some COVID updates. I guess the biggest news council I wanted to let you know is that we got word from the governor's office that there will be a second round of CARES funding. Uh, about half as much as the first time. We got 410,000, as you recall, the first time, and uh, this time about $205,000. So um, our, our sense is that uh, the council, and I think my inclination as mayor and my administration is to again, do all we can to take the, uh, the bulk of, if not all that money to support the, um, the business community and some human service agencies. And so, it's a much more streamlined process given that all the work has been done to sort of set up the framework for that. And so we would recommend to use the same liaisons from the council and the same process to um, review those and, and distribute those monies. Um, so I, I guess I would open that, that up for any comments. Councilmember Mayhew, did you want to comment to that? Yeah, um, Mayor, that sounds to me like a fantastic proposal. The one uh, thing I, I just wanted to uh, 
uh, raises a, a potential or a question. I'm sure perhaps you guys have already thought about this likely. You have already thought about this, but I know that uh, one of the things that uh, happened uh, later in the summer was there was some attempt by the city to try and um, assist with some um, events that might help local retailers, restaurants in particular. Um, and I think there was a lack of, um, well, I think it was difficult to get staffing, but also a lack of funding to even reach out to maybe some partner organizations that we might've been able to hire to assist us or, or fund if they were to do some things that might inc incur some costs. And so the one thing I just wanted to raise the question um, is, is uh, have you given any thought or, or perhaps some thought might be given to setting aside some of these funds to assist if there's something that the city could fund that would help retailers in a way that giving the money directly to them that they might not be able to accomplish. It seemed like that would be the one thing I've seen over the course of the summer that um, maybe bears some thought, but I, perhaps you guys have already thought about that. Uh, no, no, we hadn't, we hadn't gotten to a point of discussing that in detail unless the staff did when I was in one of the executive staff meetings, Rick could certainly speak to that. Um, but that you're right, that was an impediment for, um, you know, trying to move on some of those uh, ideas to assist the retail, the particularly restaurants and expanding their space so they could, you know, with a larger floor space, get uh, capacity back to what it was pre COVID and get some of their, their revenues going again. Uh, one of the biggest impediments was them not having resources or time to purchase or rent <laughs> chairs and tables and or a platform that would, you know, make it even with the sidewalk or fencing around that area or planters or whatever, mm -hmm. umbrellas and so forth. So um, to your point, Councilman Romeo, I think those are things that could be explored. Uh, I suspect if there's no further objection and just for the sake of time that the council of a whole wouldn't object to the three the three liaisons, again, I'm working with the administration to suss out some details on those options. The only reason why that might not be as viable as we're going into this fall and winter months and some of that outdoor activity is not gonna be as you know, viable. That's that's my our frustration is that we you know didn't uh, move on that as quickly as we might have. Uh, again, not to cast dispersions, but um, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But if this drags into next year, certainly it's something to to consider as well. It, it, I'm I'm going to assume no one, everybody doesn't need to weigh in. But if I don't hear any objections to that, uh, I think we'll take those ideas with the again, Councilmember Sunwell, let's say, and Mayhew into those conversations with the staff and um, representative of the chamber and so forth. Does anybody have any objections to that? Okay, great. Uh, Rick do, or Mark or anybody else or Nicole, did anyone else have anything to add on any other COVID updates that I'm not thinking of right offhand? Uh, no, Mayor. And for me, I mean, uh, I don't know if Chief Carrera has, has any update on numbers and what they're doing, but uh, we're doing an all staff virtual Zoom meeting here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, we put out a, a survey monkey, uh, talk about a little bit of COVID and the well being of the city. So staff's going to chime in on that. So we'll take the results of that and, and uh, and uh, myself and you, Mayor, uh, like we did with the, with the um, all together staff meeting. Now that we can't really have that, we're gonna have our first uh, virtual Zoom uh, all staff meeting coming up and to talk about the COVID uh, epidemic or pandemic and then uh, the city's well being and that kind of a thing. So uh, that's all I have to add, Mayor, at this time. Thanks, Rick. And I'll pause for a moment if any other staff wanna have some pertinent information I think would be worth offering. And seeing none, I'll, I'll go to uh, Councilmember Hall and Councilmember Ross. So uh, tonight demonstrated that the consent agenda is no longer working as intended as an efficiency method for this council and is instead used for grandstanding and political purposes. I move to suspend the use of consent agenda until such time as council decides to bring it back. May I have a second? Okay. All right, I'm not, I'm not hearing a second unless, second. I'm not hearing a second. So Council, Councilmember Holtway, that'll die for lack of a second. Second, I said. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilmember Jean said second. Okay, so. Got one under the, got one under the wire. Right. I, I, I've seen some hands up. Um, if everybody could put their hands down, unless it pertains to the motion that Councilmember Holloway made, otherwise it's confusing for me to know if you're raising your hand to discuss this. All right, I'll go to Councilmember Lassay. And this is uh, I'm not in support of uh, suspending 
the uh, consent agenda. I feel that if uh, particular council members want to remove things from the agenda, they should have the opportunity to. And also if they choose to do that uh, repetitively should also have to deal with the consequences. Uh, Councilmember Shepard. Yes, I'm not clear what the proposal is. It sounds like you're proposing not to have consent agenda available. That's correct. That is correct, Councilman Shepard. It is used only to, now with your efforts, it is used only to delay and confuse the proceeding of the council. I'd rather just take it off when we proceed. Councilman Jean. Oh, he just handed it down. What, okay, Councilman Jean. Actually, I would be in support of this motion, especially if we could uh, find some time to have a special council meeting to address this and let's come to a conclusion as to what we're going to do and then let's do it quickly. <laughs> Councilor Ross. I'm not in favor of this. I think we need to continue following the rules of procedure. And I would just add, um, I would encourage all council members to remember that, I mean, there were a number of questions I heard tonight regarding the agenda bills and the consent agenda have often in the past simply been addressed while still in the consent agenda. The, 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 uh, the, the big benefit of the consent agenda is you don't have to read in every single summary statement and motion, which everybody has in the pack and is familiar with. And so it's a big time saver in that regard, but you can still ask those clarifying questions. Councilman Uh Mr. Mayor, since you were present at, I believe all of those committee meetings, you'll know that those same comments were discussed by committee members uh, yeah. at length in detail and documented and recorded and are available to every council member to follow and, and follow up with. Uh, as we heard tonight also, the department heads are also available with to, and willing to receive emails and respond to questions in advance. Nothing that have said in the consent agenda discussion tonight wasn't discussed during committee during the last week. Councilmember Shepard. I disagree with the last council member's comments. All right. Uh, don't seem to be any further discussion or hands raised. So with that, we will go to a vote on the motion made by Councilmember Holloway to basically suspend or, or eliminate amend council rules or procedures to eliminate the consent agenda for the foreseeable future. All those in favor say aye. 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 Was the post saying aye? No. I think the, uh, the motion has failed. Uh, from what I saw on a, on a two to five vote. Okay. Any other, um, I don't have any other items on the committee of the whole other than the continuation of the fiscal work plan. Council, it, it, the, um, the work plan folk, or the work plan at this point would be shifting into kind of looking at, at each department. So do you, do you want to do that now or at least start to move, move through some of the departments at this point or, or continue to take those details back to the committees before looking at the whole? I mean, we, we could cover some ground with the time remaining. Councilman Ross, you had a question or clarification and Councilman Mayhem. Mine was on COVID, I think. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We can still back up. Yeah, I don't feel that we fi finished that conversation. Because um, I think you were going to hear from maybe Ms. Carrera or Nicole. Okay. Maybe. Um, but my, com my question is, do we know, are we getting close to getting out of phase two? Uh, Mark may know that better than anyone else. I've not heard anything new about any movements toward a phase two. Anything moving out of phase two. I'm just pleased that we haven't rolled back to 1.5 or one. So um, was frankly pleased to see that. But Mark, do you have any information as to or any knowledge that there might be any move toward phase phase three? No, I haven't heard any any discussion on moving out of the current phase. In fact, they were trying to tamp down the numbers before we got into the flu season. So there was more discussion about looking backwards than looking ahead. So. Um, we keep our fingers crossed, but there's, I haven't heard any plans to move, change phases in the immediate future. I, uh, I predict November 4th. <laughs> okay, so noted. Okay. Uh, Councilor Mayhew, did you have one related to COVID too, or were you commenting on that? My, uh, my comment was about um, 
a continuing uh, discussion of, of um, the budget. And I, I uh, just uh, recalled uh, from the intro of the budget discussion, I thought there was some mention of the, um, I, I think there's a large public, uh, a, a Parks and Public Works Department reorg that's sort of behind some of the numbers. That maybe I'm wrong, but if you were gonna go over that, that was one thing in particular I thought might be valuable to hear, um, but um, that, that was my only comment. I think that's that's an excellent point, Councilor Romano. I'm glad you remind me of that because that that would be a, a very, I think, appropriate item to at least move through and off the agenda tonight, and uh, before moving into the individual budgets, uh, department budgets. Any other comments on on what to do with the remainder of the time tonight? If everybody's okay with that, we could at least at a minimum do the um, presentation on proposed parks and public works reorganization. Okay, if no objection, let's do that. And if the and then at, at the conclusion of that, I'll check in again with everybody to see if they want to move on with anything else, if there's still energy. All right, uh, Robert, do you want to or Drew, do you want to queue that up? And yeah, we were queued up for it. Uh, Drew, do you have uh, ability to share your screen? Yeah. So I'm going to share the slides from the committee meeting. Just one second, everyone. Well, let me share. All right, so thank you everyone very much for your patience. Um, we're gonna discuss the Parks and Public Works Department reorganization. In essence, when crafting this reorganization, we had three goals in mind. First one was to consolidate open positions where possible. In essence, what we're trying to do is, uh, we're basically trying to support the city for the most part, given the ongoing COVID-19 emergency and the result of recession and the need really to reduce how much we budget for parks and public works. The second goal was to redistribute the remaining positions across the various department divisions more appropriately. This is largely a housekeeping activity and it's something that we haven't quite examined for some time. The city over a number of years has grown considerably and employee responsibilities have changed. And therefore we wanna make sure that we charge employee time to the proper division budget. And the third goal with this reorganization was to do our best to protect the level of service the community de desires. And so after some internal discussions, we have settled on eliminating some currently authorized positions for this biennium that we thought would have the least noticeable impact to the service is that residents, businesses, and visitors see. So those were the three goals for this uh, reorganization. So in terms of the consolidation, or to give you some sense, we have currently five open positions in the department. And to give you some sense of what those positions are, we've created this organizational chart of the 35 authorized positions for the current 2019-2020 organized biennium. Sorry. Five open positions are the utilities operations manager, CIP manager, maintenance operations manager, term limited engineer, and a facilities technician two position. As you can see, these vacancies have largely impacted the management level within the department. Consequently, Brian Krause has had to call upon the two engineers, Brian Coleman and Jeff Hamlin, to provide some much needed management support. Now, both Brian and Jeff have stepped up exceptionally well, and they've continued to advance the capital projects that we all have seen and know about while simultaneously leading the maintenance staff into in the day-to-day -day work. And so with the five current open positions, the Parks and Public Works Department is recommending the consolidation of the utilities operations manager and CIP manager position into a deputy Parks and Public Works director position. And the department is also recommending the elimination of the facilities technician two position. As a result from this, the department is proposing the shrink its overall authorized FDE count from 35 to 33. So to give you some sense of what this new organizational chart would look like, this is the proposed 2021 and 2022 organizational chart. As you can see in the lower left-hand corner, the proposed FDEs is 33, which is a reduction from 35. And this big significant impact between the previous chart and the one that you see here is in the upper left-hand corner. You'll notice that you're no longer going to see utilities operation manager position or ACIP manager position. 
And instead, as a replacement for those two positions, you'll see Deputy Parks and Public Works Director position. Now, in the previous chart, and let me just go back to it, you'll notice that the two engineers, as well as the term limited engineer, are actually reporting directly to the Parks and Public Works Director. Those three positions would now report directly to the Deputy Parks and Public Works Director, who would then report to the Parks and Public who would then report to the Parks and Public Works Director. Um, at the same time, we would leave the maintenance operations manager position pretty much alone. And then in addition to that, um, under the facilities technician two position, which is beneath the fleet and facilities supervisor, kind of in the middle right-hand side, um, that basically shrunk from two to just one position. So in terms of the redistribution. Or, Drew, could you go back yeah. one? Yes. I'm sorry, this is the first time I've noticed this and it's a major concern perhaps. Are you aware that the, <clears throat> depending on the gender of the person hired, the maintenance operations manager will be known as mom? No, I did not. I did not consider that, sorry. Yeah, Brian, might, Brian might look for another acronym. So anyway. Uh, Mayor, that was my job um, when I was hired here almost three years ago. Also, you were the mom. I was the mom. Yeah, I don't think the use of that acronym is gender specific when the opportunity arises. <laughs> Haven't right. you seen the movie, Mr. Mom? Come on. Yeah, let's let's move on. Sorry, I digress. All right, and so as mentioned earlier, one goal of the reorganization was to redistribute positions more appropriately between the different divisions, making sure that we charge employee time to the proper division budget. Now, as a result of this effort. You can see in this table that while overall the department will lose two authorized FTEs, different divisions may be more or less impacted due to the redistribution, and in some cases may actually see an increase. And so to provide you with an example of why things are shifting, uh, we found an engineer who manages capital projects to completion really charge to the budget that patches potholes, replaces street lights, and sweeps the streets. Really a maintenance type division. And so as a part of this redistribution, that engineering position would now no longer be charged to a maintenance division, but we'd be charged to a capital related division. So in essence, what we're trying to accomplish here is to align people appropriately with the funds or the funding mechanisms um, that are appropriate. Does that make sense to everyone? No. Okay. All right. So well, I know I council member backwards. I, did you say someone who is doing maintenance work is now going to be charged to capital? No, no I said someone who, is, down, right? someone who is managing capital projects, who is currently charged to a maintenance division, would in 2021 and 2022 now be charged to a capital related division. Got it, thank you. All right. And so um, during the committee meeting, council member Holloway asked a question about the difference between the deputy parks and public works director position and the two positions that we're proposing to consolidate. And so just to show you what the difference is between those two positions and the deputy parks and public works director position, in essence, depending on the step, we would save between $124,000 to $138,000 in 2021 as a result of that consolidation work. And just to give some sense, because I know Council Member Holloway asked about the MMP classification as well, uh, the two highlighted positions in yellow are the utilities operations manager position and the CIT manager position. And in essence, what I'm proposing is to uh, for the deputy parks and public works director is to essentially put it at the same position as the deputy fire chief. Uh, please keep in mind also that the parks and public works department is the largest division or department inside the city. And so we felt that the deputy fire chief was probably the appropriate comparable in this case. All right. So let's see if I got one more slide. Nope. So in essence, that's all I have to really share about the Parks and Public Works Department reorganization. And Brian Krause is available to answer any questions you may have as well. Councilor Mayhem and Councilor Ross. So, um, Mayor, I wonder if you could comment or, or maybe it's, I don't know who's appropriate to comment, but 
one thing that struck me um, as I was watching this and listening to it um, that wasn't discussed is <clears throat> it, it looks like the span of control for the Parks and Public Works director is going from a somewhat large number down to a much smaller number. And it occurred to me that that might be a really important thing for the city to accomplish that because I believe that one of the things we need our parks and public works director to do is pursue funding from outside, I'll say outside sources, you know, the state, uh, the county, uh, and so forth. And that um, spending time building the relationships um, at those organizations is a really important part of that director position and that this would by by shrinking that span of control, it, it also creates time is likely to create time for him to do that. Is that um, is that accurate? Is that something I should also see here? Uh, yeah, that's my. I think you might have heard me before express my. That was my one fear, concern with eliminating some of these positions and reducing those FTEs was that it would it would go in the wrong direction for the Parks and Public Works director to leave them more stressed to not tend to, um, again, bring home that bread and butter, you know, bring in those grants, that's what's critical to make all the wheels turn. If that's not happening, you know, you can organize this however you want, uh, you know, things just stop. So, um, so I'm, I'm pleased to your point, uh, it gives me more comfort to know by, by reducing the number of direct reports, all the FTD, FTEs have been reduced by significantly reducing the FT, the, the direct reports to the Parks and Public Works Director does free up their time to focus on that as being a significant part of their job. Well, that, that seems like a huge win in what uh, is being proposed beyond the things that were just uh, mentioned. Yeah, and I guess I'd, I probably should have let Rick weigh in on that or comment more than I did. Rick, do you want to add to that or? Uh, uh, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Council. No, I think uh, Mayor Pro Tem and you uh, basically uh, vetted out pretty good. Um, as a director of a department, as when you're on that umbrella view as a director, you want to be freed up to deal with a lot of the things that are not operational, if you will. And so, like you said, grants, partnerships, relationships, uh, working with mayors, uh, chairmen, and others uh, to, to work on any other kind of funding or to work on a partnership or working with the county and being able to make the time to do that. Uh, partnerships with the county you do this, we'll do this, or why don't, why don't you pay for this and we'll take care of mobilization and kind of work these things out. Um, when we were first looking at this reorganization, Brian was spending a lot of time in the operations part of the organization, which doesn't free him up enough to do what he needs to do and, and be able to, to take on that, that role. Um, I, I have done these reorganizations quite a bit in past agencies. Uh, it, it's just, when you look at something, you look at ways to make it more efficient, to make it so, it, it, you know, if lack of a better way to say it pays for itself by doing other things, by being able to go after extra funding. Um, uh, and, and it's a never ending process. So we're looking at reorganization throughout the whole agency. And especially as we move into 21 and 22, uh, we'll be looking at every department uh, with that, uh, especially if revenues continue to uh, deplete, if you will, trying to find those efficiencies and freeing people up to go after money uh, with a vengeance, if you will. So, um, yeah, so I, that, that's to add uh, what, what you uh, what you two uh, have already said. So uh, thank you. Ryan, you have your hand up. I assume you want to add to that. Yeah, I want to explain something that we really haven't uh, verbalized yet either that might help clarify this a little bit. So. Um, You've covered one of the uh, reasons why we're going after this particular uh, structure and it's to free up my time to go after bigger fish, so to speak. One of the other uh, things we're trying to accomplish is to identify gaps in our ability to serve our customers, serve the public, serve you council. And procurement was a big one of them. You know, uh, this year we worked earlier this year to finalize the um, uh, purchasing matrix and some of those things, those things take a lot of time for us to uh, appropriately uh, quote projects, bid projects, and then develop the related approval process documents that you need to see and for us to follow 
the requirements of our own policies and then the RCWs. So in facilities, for instance, the technician two position we're eliminating because the real gap in facilities is with helping the facilities folks put contracts in place. So what we're gonna do is bring that up in, into a technical position to help develop scopes of work, put things out to bid, draft agenda bills and related follow-up work and track these projects and put contracts in place. And that needs to be done by more of a technical person than a technician. So we're trying to fill that gap that way. Um, in addition to the efficiencies Rick talked about in, in freeing up my time to go after grants and other things. Great, thank you, Brian. Councilman Ross and Councilman Holloway. First of all, I like the reorganization. I think it will be more efficient for you. Um, I'm curious, have you formally filled those two positions of the deputy director and manager? Brian. Uh, no, no, we have not. That, that is uh, something we wanted to make you all aware of before we um, took any steps in that direction. Uh, we wanted to be, you know, have you all weigh in on your thoughts on this before uh, taking any of those steps. Councilor Holloway and then Councilor Shepard. Uh, here's, I guess here's my problem and, and the consideration I'm asking here. If you look at this chart, what is proposed there as a deputy director is at the same organizational level as your maintenance operation manager. A deputy director usually will have the same span of control as the director, just acting instead when that director is off doing other things. I don't believe that is the position you're putting in here. You're putting in a position with scope of control of a portion of the organization as shown in the chart here. So my question is, I agree consolidating the management roles there probably deserves a step up, but is it a step to a direct director level as far as a job description? Um, I, I think what you're seeing here is more of a graphics to fit the page more than a representation of hierarchy. Um, right now, the way it works, the maintenance operations managers report directly to parks and public works director. And um, there's, there's a clear definition of work between the, uh, let's just call it enterprise side, which is utilities and the general fund side, which includes park streets, fleet and facilities. So having the general fund side uh, report to the director, it doesn't necessarily, that the, the volume of work um, would in theory be less because the uh, deputy is also in charge of the engineering as well as the operational side of the house. So there is a little bit of a uh, higher role expectation out of the deputy director as, as opposed to the maintenance operations manager. Um, I think graphically it, it would show a little lower um, because it, it would be a lower salary. So I think it, they don't, I don't think both sides need a deputy at this point in time, if that answers your question. No, that's my, that's my question six months from now. Um, all right, so I assume this is a director position and as such, we'll come to council for ratification. I ask that uh, Deborah review the statement of work and scope of control and make sure that this qualifies as a director position. Does that sound reasonable, Matt? Um, I guess I'm not quite following me because we we do have like the, the the equivalent in the deputy director or in the fire station. So I think I usually leave it up to staff to sort of determine the appropriate um, ranking of that. It seems like this is more of a graphic issue where, I mean, it seems to me the line coming off the top of the mom, the maintenance operations manager is coming right between the public parks, public works director and deputy parks and public works director, assuming if the parks the parks and parks director is off chasing money or whatever, they're going to go to the deputy and maybe more directly, if not. Um, maybe there's a way to just graphically fix this or at least put the deputy box higher. Uh, Rick, do you have any thoughts on this to maybe fix the graphics on this? Or Well, and I'm not sure. It's, a, it's more, and the graphics should represent the scope of control, okay? If right. that 
Japanese well, position is scope of control, everything but maintenance operations. I question whether it's a whether it's a director position or just a higher level management position. Yeah, no, it does seem. I think it's a great question that, that everybody should be answering to, to the deputy and then vis a vis the parks public works director. Rick or Deborah, do you guys want to weigh in? Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, I, I have a. I have another idea on this on this chart. I was just going with what Brian's recommendation was. Um, this works, but on, a, on, on Council Member Holloway's point, if Brian's gone, who does the maintenance operation manager uh, report to if the director is not there, right? So um, there's no connection, if you will, between public works, engineering, and parks and rec. Right. The deputy director in the absence of the director has the same scope of control yeah. as the director. Yes, if that is not the case here. It's not a deputy director position. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> to fix it, we would have to make the maintenance operations manager go directly into the the deputy director, take the parks and public works title out, and it would be a, or part it would be parks and um, we have to change the, the deputy director from parks and public works. It would stay, uh, it would stay parks and public works. And then the maintenance operations manager would tie into the deputy director and the deputy director would be responsible to the director, which would take care of council member Holloway's question that the deputy deputy director would be in command when Brian's off doing his thing, if you will, lack of a better way to say it, then that then a chain of command would work. The Hispanic control is shrunk. The maintenance operations manager would report to the deputy P and deputy PD, right? Um, uh, that that would work that way, but I'd have to talk to Brian a little bit more offline to figure out the nuances with that. But uh, yeah, we, just by changing a line and what that position, uh, obviously that position would would take on quite a bit more responsibility. So we'd have to look at the the pay chart and see where it fit in. Um, but that that could be a way to that that could be a way to fix it, um, if if you will. Um, like I said, we're, this is. We're just trying, you know, we're just trying to make efficiencies. We're trying to look at other things. We're trying to prepare for the next biennial. Um, and we're, we're not done probably with efficiencies. I mean, we already did one position. This is another department looking at that. We might be looking at other departments in 21 to build efficiencies and doing that as well um, as we move forward, depending on what happens with our revenue and, and our world at this point. But that's one way to, to look at it and, and reorganize this thing so it would work. Well, but Rick, you should decide what are the job descriptions you want in place for those efficiencies. Right. And then the level and the org chart fall out from that. Right. Not the other way around. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it seems like it's, um, I mean, the other way to go is to simply, it might be just as the same cost to simply make the, or recognize if the, if the, maintenance operations manager has similar responsibilities. I mean, I like what you're eloquently doing too is making the segregation between general fund activities and enterprise fund activities. Right. Public schools under either one. So maybe it's two deputies, you know, uh, is the is the other way to fix it. Yes, that is another way to fix it as well. We had two operations managers, right? So one's gone, if you will, with this chart, but if we do the other one with a deputy public works director, um, yes, that would fix that, Mayor. So anyway, it's great. It's great feedback, Councilor Hall. We appreciate yeah. it. That's the way we want to go with, uh, through this with Council, and uh, Rick, Rick, and Brian, and the staff, and, and Deborah can certainly go back and and uh, massage that or look at some other options and ideas and come back to the Council. Yeah, yeah we'd be uh, happy to. Yeah, Councilor Shepard. Yeah. So uh, in removing two FTEs, you're talking about bringing on some work that's done by contractors or consultants. Have you built that into the budget yet, or is that something that you're going to propose when you propose this reorg? Um, we're not proposing that we're bringing in any more contract work than we already are. What we're trying to do is put people in positions to manage consultants. Um, and, and that's where our big gap is right now in the operation is um, being able to deliver and manage contracts and contractors and the related procurement process and councilmatic processes. 
Um, but we aren't necessarily proposing to to bring in consultants in this scenario. This this scenario is to uh, basically make us more effective and efficient at delivering projects to council and the community, and then effectively managing our the call, consultants we do hire. And the consultants we do hire uh, will be related to capital projects and those types of things, service contracts. These are all things we do now. We're not looking to expand that through this organizational chart. Well, in fact, I, I'm pleased the question has been raised because there's a certain uh, penny wise and a dollar foolish approach if you're sort of hunkered down with uh, the Parks and Public Rec, Rec Director and others being too, having their hands too deep in the operations to where they don't have the time to go after the, the grants and the money. If there's any consultant work, Councilmember Shepard, and, and this was precisely going back to the concerns that I had and Rick had too, was um, if there's any additional consultants that would come with you know that million dollar grant or whatever for the particular capital project, which is what Brian was suggesting. So uh, we could, you know, if we're successful in freeing up more time to pursue aggressively pursue more grant funding, uh, we could end up, you know, sort of ahead on on overall staffing resources between full-time FTEs and consultant work, but it's paid for largely through the grants rather than having that burden on the enterprise fund and the utility fees. Councilor Hawley? Oh, okay. Left his hand up. Any other questions or comments on this? All right, so then I guess the next question, Council, is do you have an appetite, it's 816, um, to start going into any individual department budgets at this time, or at least with the general fund? Or do you want to call it a night? Let's go home. Right. Oh, we are home. <laughs> is that in the form of a motion, Councilor Jean? Yeah. Motion. Second. second. Okay. I believe there was a motion to adjourn, a motion a second to adjourn tonight's meeting. Uh, any further discussion? Yeah, discuss it. All right, thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, motion passes. Everyone have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs>